I give it a little spray since we're at the end. Woo! <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Trying to go natural. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Really welcome back since I was filming just yesterday and here I am today, <laughs> which is crazy for me as you guys know. But I have to, I wanna get these end of year videos out to you all. The least I can do, right, once a year, get some content out. So here I am. This is day four in my wash and go. I'm pretty much doing like a week in my wash and go also since you guys saw my day two and day three. So. Day four, um, she sent it plum nectar and I gave. So today I'm doing my best products of 2019, which is basically what are my holy grails now at the end of 2019. A few new items, but really honestly, mostly it's just like last year, except for just a few changes. But let me let you know what they are. If you're new, you may not have seen them. One note, Blue Rose Beauty, I still love their products, but I haven't seen her selling in a few months. I don't want to say it's gone, but like I'm not sure if she's still selling anymore or what. I did have two favorites from her that I'll just mention now. Maybe sadly I might have to remove them if she's not selling anymore permanently, I don't know. This Coco Rose Creamy Shampoo was in my favorite shampoos as you can see. <laughs> this chai hair tea was like my favorite tea treatment. Other than just using tea bags, this is what I used and I loved it. I hope everything's well with her and I hope she starts back the store. We'll see I guess next year I guess. If I don't mention these at all next year, she probably hasn't started the store back, so yeah, sad news on that. But now let me just get on with the list, starting as usual from shampoos and going to refresher sprays. I still have the Baskin Bloom Herbal Cleanse, which is a nice gentle cleanser. It almost feels like just a co-wash or something, but it's a shampoo. It has some coca glucoside as a surfactant, but it's kind of halfway down, so it's a really gentle cleanser. So I really enjoy this when I want a shampoo, but I don't want a shampoo shampoo, you know what I mean? That's this for this. So I don't really have a clarifying shampoo on my list just because I try not to put stuff that I need to clarify on there, on my hair. So I would just probably just use one of my, whatever shampoo was kind of stripping or strong, I'll just use that when I want to clarify. But mostly I'm just going to start with moisturizing shampoos because that's my routine. So I have this Basket Bloom Gentle Herbal Cleanser and then I have the new, new, something new on the list. Um, <laughs> I have the She Scented Plum Nectar and Agave Shampoo, so I love this shampoo. Had it on, of course my scalp was dirty, so I was just going like, mm, 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 for you guys. Spoiler alert. I really enjoyed it. I may have left it on too long because it was on there for like several minutes. I could even detangle with it in, which was nice. <laughs> but still, when I rinsed my hair, my hair was soft, my hair was smooth. And it was just super moisturizing which was nice so my hair was just clean and moisturized perfection so I'm loving the shampoo as well and I would say it's a bit stronger than the herbal cleanse so this is like a shampoo shampoo and the herbal cleanse almost feels like a co-wash shampoo you can see this one goes water plum and then the surfactants whereas this one is surfactants are halfway down in basket bloom definitely a shampoo but definitely moisturizing plus I love the scent has a kind of sweet fruity but slightly perfumey scent so I love the scent. The scent is like my favorite shampoo scent. <laughs> so I like the color of the liquid and the consistency, like love. Let me get into like kind of co-washy stuff. This Camille Rose Caramel Co-Wash is still on here. Perfection again. This is like the one product I say this every year. I can just use this and go pretty much. I can just use this as a cleanser, conditioner, leave-in, everything and just go because my hair is just so moisturized but still clean. And you guys know when something doesn't make your hair clean, I let you know because my scalp lets me know. If I say your hair feels clean after this and your scalp feels clean, it definitely feels clean. But your hair just feels moisturized, conditioned, defined, everything as well. Then runner-up, so I have the Blueberry Co-Wash in the Dream Tea and ginseng co-wash they're both super moisturizing this one's a bit creamier this one is kind of lighter so i don't know but they both cleanse my scalp and moisturize my hair really well and these are like my staples these are the ones i reach for at least back in my co-wash days like i said i haven't co-washed in about a year just because i've been working out and i just really need a shampoo by the time i get to wash day but like this week i didn't work out much i was lazy so this is a week where i could probably reach for the co-wash definitely if you like co-washers go for these and then the other new new on the list well not new 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 but new <laughs> uh, is this she sent it passion fruit and flax charcoal scalp detox so you guys saw the video if you haven't seen the video go look at it y'all y'all i didn't want to rinse this out ever i was just running around screaming about how amazed and happy i was it felt kind of like a clear treatment but a light one it wasn't messy spreads easily light moisturizing cleanse my hair my hair just felt so good 
slip was there like this was like perfection it has like a light minty feel on your scalp just go watch the review because this was everything again i didn't try that much new stuff this year mostly just a bunch of honeys handmade which like i said are good products but they're not about to knock anything off any podium so i don't think i itemized the, the deep conditioners last year so maybe i'm gonna make more of an effort to itemize them this year definitely deep conditioners she sent it in terms of which ones I want to say the original Rich Moisture Mask, the original kind of Curl Moist Conditioner, I use that as a deep conditioner. In the newer ones, the Pomegranate and Pear, and I think just there's like another Restore and Repair Mask as well. So this Rich Moisture, this Restore and Repair, no particular order because like I said, they're really all awesome. This Pomegranate Restore Hair Mask. The Flaxy Deep Conditioner, which I think I'm out of, but that one was also amazing, although I use it after the Super Amazing Cleanser, so that one I would need to buy again and use after like some stripping shampoo or something to really let you guys know, but that one also is going to be on this list because my hair felt amazing after. But pretty much everything she sent it. I gave these to Edge just because for my hair, they instantly penetrate and instantly wow me. Some of the others, it wasn't like as soon as it hit my hair, hearts were flying. It was amazing at first, but not, oh my god, amazing. But these are like, oh my god, amazing instantly. Like that's how I kind of help narrow it down, basically. Because for me, with my ultra low porosity, anything kind of rich and creamy sometimes takes a while to penetrate. Deep conditioners, everything she sent it. And this Baskin Bloom Brahmi Root hair mask this again is an instant penetrator moisturizer for me so that's why I made this list anything that I can put on and rinse out within five minutes and my hair is super amazing it's on the list someone wanted to see like a best deep conditioners list from me that's pretty much the list my favorite protein treatment although I haven't done a protein treatment in like all of 2019 but I'm still putting this on the list this is my favorite protein treatment whenever I have to do one I really have to do the video for y'all because my hair went from this to like this, it just sprung up after I used this, which was amazing. And of course the moisture was there as well. The Killer Rich and Marula and Quinoa Damage Control Reparative Conditioner. My favorite protein treatment. So it's probably still not as strong as Afoji, but it doesn't have silicones, which I love. So in terms of all natural protein treatment, this is the strongest one I've found. Plus the moisture is there, plus the boing, the effectiveness is there. So if you haven't tried this yet, definitely get you some. HD for sure. I don't want to say and forever, but always and forever I'm thinking about, but you know I'm not loyal. <laughs> so I can't say that, but HD for sure. Leave-ins, again, I have the Sultanicals Frizz Wiz, which gives me moisture, definition, and even a slight hold, I would say. So I really enjoy that about this. I think there is some gum in here. So there's some cellulose gum, some Irish moss, and so on. So I'm kind of seeing that. I don't think I tried it as a leave-in only wash and go, but it's something I would even consider for that. It's just the business. It's the business. The Bakura Honey Latte Hair Milk. This one is like super light and airy, very moisturizing. And it just gave me great definition and volume at the same time, which I said wowed me. So everything here, of course, is moisturizing. Everything here pretty much has great slip. Let me just say that right off the bat. From the cleansers to the gels, I can tell you moisturizing and great slip for everything. But I just love the light volume and definition that this gave me. So that's why this is on this list. And then the Anasi Natural Hibiscus Leave-In is also on my HG list. I want to say it's a little bit between the Frizzways and the Bakura. It does give me that moisture, that definition. I wouldn't say it has any hole per se. And then it's also a little bit heavier than the Bakura. So, but the moisture is definitely there. I want to say this is probably the most moisturizing of the three. This gives me a little bit of like hold. And this gives me light, airy volume with definition. Pick whichever, but they're all good to me. I have this Honey Hydrate leave-in in here, not for wash and go, but for like twist outs and protective styles. Because this gives me the longest lasting moisture. So I can like do a braid out with this and my hair stays moisturized for the whole week or whatever, sometimes longer. So that's why this is in here and that's why I only purchased this. Not for like wash and goes, like my everything else is kind of geared towards my wash and go life. This is geared towards my struggle weeks when I have to do something and I just want to twist it up and not have it dry out on me. I grab this and I put some little cream over it and we good forever, basically. This is like my perpetual motion machine of moisture. I love it for that. In terms of creams, I still want to say the She Scented Peach Nectar Moisturizing Yogurt and curling jelly and I again I really haven't used creams this year because I've been busy being a super lazy natural and just spending all my time either working or working out or sleeping really I have just barely done the minimum with my hair but in terms of creams 
this one gives great moisture and definition this one gives a little less moisture but more definition but definitely still moisturizing so if you want hydration for sure loads of hydration but not much hole if you want great hydration and great hole then you know pick your poison again so that's why i have multiples in each category just because you know it's like once with snow like i said each one might give you something slightly different but still good so it's a heights to this it's not just i can't just give you the favorite one because i feel like it's shortchanging you of the other one that you might want based on what you're looking for if you're looking for moisture and light moisture too so i would say like all curl types i know have a few like fine hair people follow me this will be for you if you want like just a kind of one product twist out or something this would be for you and it has more hole and stuff then this would be for you gels i want to put as i am curling jelly kind of officially on the list just because it does everything all the rest of these do which is give me moisture definition and hold for an entire week or more in terms of results it's probably the best one right now i really have to be honest and let you guys know that so i don't buy that often i don't go to sally's that often in fact i don't even i haven't been using any did i use i think i used uncle funky and camaro's a few times this year but i've mostly been just trying out new gels because i had like so many gels to try so between my few diys and trying out new gels i really haven't used much of my staples a lot of people say like youtubers you all say you love something and you all don't come back and use it it's because we're youtubers and we have to be reviewing other things for you all so sometimes we don't even get back with the things we want to be using so that's kind of the case with these gels the kinky curly curling custard of course so I would probably put this second in terms of hitting all the moisture, definition and hold. And then of course just softness and just like all of these are all natural botanical gels because I don't really, I can't really get with the Kabama kind of PVP ethyl methyl kind of life. It just feels weird when I'm applying it to my hair. So all of these are like all natural botanical. I think except the as I am curling jelly as a matter of fact but I think they hide it really well so I can't detect that when I'm putting it on so then probably after that I would give it to this one for a second but it's a close second I mean it's a, all of them pretty close like that's the race it so all of them are pretty close between the two of these this one gives a little bit more moisture but can get kind of build up -y. A scalp can get kind of icky when I use a lot of this so this can kind of build up this Uncle Funky's daughter curly magic so kind of mm -hmm. and this one is a little bit less moisturizing but other than that it's good and it's still super moisturizing it's just a little teeny less moisturizing than this one so yeah I think just try them all I guess if you're looking for something that doesn't build up and not gunky use this one if you're looking for something that your hair just stays laid forever use this one because that's a problem i have with this i like my hair to get bigger as the week goes on and when i use this my hair is kind of stuck in day one which i know for some people is their dream for me it's kind of a horror i think both of these give a lot of elongation i think all of them give a lot of elongation as a matter of fact except the camille rose and the baskin bloom tw twirly hair gel next i would say the baskin bloom twirly hair gel it's super moisturizing but it's not as defined it's more of a natural look i think it's still more defined than this so it's not as defined but my hair just feels super soft and moisturized and still very defined and just amazing like all of these gels my hair feels amazing when it's on and i think that's the main point i don't want to feel like i have a gel in my hair i just want it to feel like i don't have anything but moisture and it's just super soft and natural to the touch flowing and so on that's what i like for my gels that's what i'm looking for okay so yeah and then i would give the camille rose curl maker last but not least in a sense to me this is like least and best in a way because in terms of my hair feeling like there's nothing on it this wins it gives me the lightest most volume most moisturized and everything it's just not as much definition and i guess it's not as laid as the others so in terms of lasting they all last so it just depends on what you're going for so in a sense this is my favorite just because it's like i said in terms of the most volume and softness and feels like there's nothing there this will be the favorite so it just depends on what your mood is at the at the time so it's weird they're all pretty much even so let me know which ones you like the best and which ones you don't like and stuff like that because i'm just curious about that especially in terms of this list but just what are your favorite gels on the whole because like i said this is it this is like the awesome gel list the end 
Whereas, like I said, other leave-ins and leave conditioners and stuff leave me super happy as well, even if they're not on the podium. Like, this is the podium and then there's a huge gulf in terms of gels until I get to others that my hair looks alright but feels a little or whatever, whatever. So, let me know about your botanical gels. Alright. In terms of sprays, I still have the Sultanicals Hair Sorrow. The Jane Carter Revitalizing Leave-In got dumped <laughs> because now it has silicone in it. And yes, it's the water soluble silicone, but I just don't play with that. I may buy one to test it, but I'm not like overly curious. And there's not a lot of Jane Carter that I'm really looking for now these days anyway. Maybe I might see it in Target and lose my mind one day, but I don't know. Could be the end for that. So for now, I just have this here, Sorrel. It's very hydrating. I wouldn't say it adds anything in terms of hole or definition or frizz control and stuff. The revitalizing hair leave-in did do great things for me for frizz control. Even kind of like redefining my hair or whatever. This one is just super moisturizing. So I'm gonna take that. That's gonna be a win for me. And this is pretty much the only spray on my top list now. The other sprays, you know, they moisturize. Okay, yeah. But they don't give me that extra oomph of moisture. This is like extremely moisturizing and it smells great. Sorry, I love. Well, I think it's hibiscus in there, but yeah. So that's it. I hope you guys still enjoy this video. I don't know, I feel like a lot of us naturals have pretty much found our products. Is that you? Have you pretty much found your holy grails? I find my holy grail hasn't been changing all that much in the last few years. After you've tried a hundred products or whatever, like you kind of find your 10 best or 20 best and it doesn't change that much, I'll be honest. I'm expecting to find at least one more thing from Anasi to be on this podium next year. Whatever else she says it might bring out in the year to come, I don't know. Definitely will be trying it. Pearl Origin, you know, maybe something from that will feature. I don't really foresee Honey's Handmade going up there. Bekura, I have more Bekura to try as well, so you might see some of that. Blue Rose, even though I have a lot of Blue Rose to try, like I said, with the store kind of being closed. <laughs> These things make me so sad, I don't know. I don't know what changes we'll see in 2020, but I guess that's why it's like Happy New Year and everything. Like, you know, all the excitement of change and new things to come. Because you really don't know what's going to happen. And that's the case with... My issue is my best own. Let me know what new products you found that you really love that made it up to let's say your best top three or something. Cause the only things that are new for me are these two. So I'm kind of disappointed and kind of happy because in a sense that means my HD is really my HD and the best for me. But I was like, you know, you want to show different things, but I'm sorry, I don't have much new things this year. But I hope you guys appreciate it anyway. <laughs> so that was it. Thanks again for watching and I really hope you enjoyed and appreciated this. See you in the next one. Bye.